Hey everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood accountant, Eric Stockhausen, and today I'm going to be doing part two of my Gwent Midwinter Update card reveal series. Uh, the Gwent team has just released the next 20 cards for the Midwinter Update, as well as made um, some corrections to old cards. We knew some of these changes were happening already because of the previous update stream, but it has given us a revelation that every time they have one of these streams, they'll update older cards that have already been revealed to their now uh, more up-to-date um, base strengths and card effects and language. I will also, in this video, talk about some corrections to the previous video because I made some wrong, uh, wrong interpretations of cards. Not many, but enough that it merits making the corrections. So we're going to start off with the neutral cards that were added. The first one is Boulder. Excuse me. Boulder. Special organic. Deal seven damage to an enemy and move it to the row above. If the row is full, destroy the enemy instead. Well, I don't expect the uh, if the row above, destroy the enemy instead to happen all the time. Because I expect your opponent to play around this. The Boulder can only, can't move something in the siege row. So if you're playing against movement Skoyotel and you expect the Boulders which will be pulled by the Elven Mercenaries, put your units into the Siege Row. However, if you do that and fill up the Siege Row, then they'll just take any minion that's in the melee or range row, move it to the range row, and then hit it with a boulder to do finish it off because your Siege Row is full. So there is, you can't counter the strategy all the way. And boulder is a nice addition to the movement Scoia'tael archetype. And I can see it, Right now, it reads strictly better than Azure's Thunder, but you have to remember Azure's Thunder is a spell, so it can be pulled with Ithleen, and it can be pulled with um, Sages from your graveyard. The next card is Spear, special item. Deal damage equal to the base power of a bronze or silver unit in your hand. Now, base power is different than the initial power that we see on the Wyvern Scale Shield. This is important. Base power own, uh, means that if you are playing a veteran deck and you got a 13 strength skirmisher in your hand, this thing will do 13 damage. This won't. Vibrant Scale Shield does initial power, the power that the card had when the game started. How much strength it had um, <laughs> when you put it in your deck. What it says when you look at your collection. This is how much base power it has currently. That's a big deal. Now, spear is directly uh, spear based decks are directly countered by Strigobor. Strigobor says truce. Each player draws a car a uh, unit, a unit specifically, not any card, a unit, and sets its power to one. So if you're playing a Wyvern Scale Shield deck, then you're going to have a large lot of large base strength units in your deck. Now you might want to uh, combo that with um, cards that have low base strength just so that you can buff them up with the cards in your hand. However, if you draw into one of those cards that you were expecting to have a high base strength or high initial strength, Strigobor will damage that. Now I expect Strigobor to be played in um, what I'm going to call mini Skellige and we'll get to that when we get to the Skellige section. The final new card that has been added to neutrals is Uma's Curse. Spell, that's important. Cursed, special. Spell means that it can be pulled by Yavin. Uh, well, it's a, Yavin can pull any special, but spell will have more impact on uh, Scoia'tael than other classes. Spawn a gold unit and transform it, transform into it. Spawn means that you um, get three choices, and you get to pick one. It's like Discover in Hearthstone. Uma's Curse is actually probably a pretty good card. Um, now, sometimes you'll just get three really bad gold units that don't mesh with your deck at all, because some golds like pull relics from your deck. If you're um, not monster, you can't do anything with that. So... There are times where Uma's Curse will flop, but most of the time, because you have three options, you'll be able to get an option that is good for what you want to accomplish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Uma's Curse brings fun RNG to the game, and I think 
uh, we'll see some ladder decks run it. Not given a guarantee, just my first impression is I'm expecting people to play it. Not just because it's an amazing card, but because the effect might actually be viable. Okay, one of the changes to a previously released card is Geralt Yurin. We already knew that it was going to go down to five base strength, but we're gonna pay attention to any changes in these cards after future reveals. Now, uh, one mistake I made was tokens. Tokens does not mean just randomly spawned units like the rabid wolves and the peasants, but rather um, tokens, it's kind of a callback to old card games where you would put tokens on cards to represent that you did damage to rebuff them. With Geralt Yurden, uh, the tokens refer to um, specifically to resilience, um, Quen Sign, Lock, trying to think oh and spy spy is also a token on a card it's these little symbols and signs that we can put on them that it changed the way the card looks on the board okay without uh, now that we're done with the neutrals we're going to move on to the monsters monsters new uh, card is alpha werewolf beast cursed spawn a wolf on either side if played in moonlight now moonlight again is we don't know exactly what it is but we the idea is it's an arc, it's a, a weather effect probably that you play on your side of the board that is beneficial. Now, um, when this is played, it's just a 10 base strength card, which makes it good for the spheres and the wyvern scale shield. But it gets the two rabid wolves, which are uh, one base strength cards, putting it up at 12. Now, if you want to do a swarm deck, Alpha Werewolf is good for that. And swarm decks are also good with Werewolf because swarm decks use AoE effects to buff everything up. And this card cannot be destroyed by targeted effects. So, uh, it's also cursed, which is important. All the werewolves are considered cursed. So if you build a cursed deck for monsters, you can put this card in there. Next card is Horrific. It's called Parasite. Uh, if you are squeamish, do not watch. Uh, get the premium version of this card. It will make you sick. Organic, special, choose one. Deal 12 damage to an enemy or boost an ally by 12. Now, there's an alchemy card right now that does 12 damage to an enemy. Um, so this one reads strictly better than that card. But remember, alchemy cards can be fetched with cards like uh, Vesemir, the golden Vesemir. The choice between boosting and doing damage is important because sometimes your opponent might not have a unit with 12 health on the board. And so if you boost an ally, you can avoid that. Now, however, boost means that you can be um, countered because certain cards like Igni and Scorch will take that 12 strength and just kill it. Most of the time, you're probably going to use this for damage. You can get rid of a Impera Enforcer. I believe is the card, <laughs> an Emperor Brigade with this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a big deal unless there is a card revealed that works off organic things, can fetch those from your deck. Like Fesimir can fetch. Alchemy is uh, a card that fetches organics. And there are plenty of organics in the game, and I would love to make a, a deck around them. I probably would be monsters. Speaking of cards that pull things from your, uh, well, not really. They didn't pull it from your deck. Brewis Ritual. So I was correct. There were going to be all three golden, um, uh, we um, not Weavises, but um, crones added to the game. So Brewis Ritual is Relic, Mage, Resurrect, two Bronze, Death Wish units. Now, not only does this card go well with Death Wish, De Death Wish decks, but it also goes well with Necker Consume, because if you pull the two Neckers that, you're, that have gone into the graveyard onto the board, they're not removing them from your deck. And that allows you, if you're going with greedy uh, Necker Consume, to preserve, uh, preserve your graveyard. Uh, I mean, preserve your Necker count. So right now there are cards that allow you to trigger the Death Wish of, uh, of your cards, and you would play that on your Necker, and it would pull another Necker onto the board so that in the next round you would have more Neckers as carryover. However, with... Uh, Brewis Ritual, you can resurrect two previously dead Neckers. They would come onto the board as three strength each. However, 
you would still have a bunch of Neckers as carryover in the next round. So let's say you have one Necker with 12 strength on the board, and then you use this, and then you have one Necker with 12 and two with three. Next round, you get those three more with, let's say, 10 um, strength each. Be massive carryover. So this is really good with uh, Necker Consume, in my opinion. And that's where I think people will play it. Moving on to Milk Guard, we have uh, Ointment, or Poultice. I don't know why it has two names here. Alchemy Special Item. Heal an ally and randomly split five boosts between allies. So healing will be important, especially if you get hit by um, Strugabor. <laughs> because then you get Strugabor's effect is countered, and then you get that five boost. The, uh, the effect that I expect more often would probably be resurrect a bronze unit with five or less. Which brings us to Slave Driver. Officer, spawn a bronze unit from your opponent's deck. I really want to make a deck that's all about uh, playing your opponent's cards, and Slave Driver would be a great for, um, addition to that deck if I made it in Nilfgaard. So, um, this, if you use this card, the spawn will give you three choices. So you don't always you won't get straddled with let's say an Elven Mercenary if you don't have any spells in your deck. You can pick something that you know has a large effect onto the board. Because Slave Driver has that three strength in it, if you play into a class that has cards you want to spawn, Northern Realms um, Blue Mountain Commandos would be the worst case scenario. But if you played into another Nilfgaard deck, you could just play their Nilfgaard cards and then have an extra three strength, meaning you have the advantage because all the cards that you're playing are three strengths stronger <laughs> than theirs. I think uh, Slave Driver will definitely see some play. Um, is my first impression. I'll say more when we have more cards revealed. Uh -huh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yennefer Tremors, Mage Adrian, uh, spawn a spawn the last bronze or silver spell you play. Uh, so you, there aren't very many um, silver spells to point out here. There are plenty in the neutral pile. I am not exactly sure how we're going to play Yennefer Tremors now. They need to reveal more because what is the silver spell that Nilfgaard wants to play again? Nothing's coming to the top of my head. So uh, we're going to have to just wait, okay? Because spell is not the same thing as uh, special. That's important to note. Now uh, we're going to move on to Northern Realms. Northern Realms has these two mage cards that, uh, from this, from their their callbacks to Witcher Two. I won't spoil it. So we have Tormented Mage, uh, Mage Curse. Look at two Ron spells or items from your deck and then play one. So they're a lot like Elven Mercenary, but they're two strength instead of one. Uh, and they're also kind of like. What, what do you call it? Um, emissary? Yes, Emissary. Uh, except instead of units, they're spells and items. I think this card will be really strong. Um, it's, gr it's great thinning. It's You could build an item deck around it. You can build a curse deck around it too. There are probably going to be neutral fetch a curse card from your deck. That going to be added to the game so you don't have to necessarily just use marching orders to get tormented mage damn sorceress <laughs> mage curse if there is a curse unit um, on this unit's row deal seven damage so you play this next to this it becomes a strictly better azure's thunder because it represents 11 point swing removal is really powerful because it uh, can completely mess up certain decks strategies, specifically uh, Northern Realms. So in the Northern Realms versus Northern Realms, Damn Sorceress is going to be damn powerful. Uh, Herbert um, Redick, <laughs> Redick, I can't say this name. Uh, let's just call him Herb. Uh, he's a vampire, drain all boost um, from the units in your deck. So let's say you're playing Full Test. You play Full Test immediately for five strain, and then you play Herbert, and you have a 40 unit deck. So you would have 30 more cards in your deck after drawing 10. 
Herbert would come out as a 37-point card. You'd have 42 points in two cards, uh, guaranteeing that you would probably win the round if your opponent doesn't have an answer. However, if your opponent has an answer, you had just wasted a ton of points. <laughs> and uh, you can still use those boosts, theoretically, if you have lots of deck thinning. So I'm not exactly sold on Herbert as a play immediately effect, even if on the stream the developer said you play this card early. I just can't see it. I, I would say build a deck with low deck uh, with relatively low deck thinning, and if you still have 20 cards in your deck and you play Herbert, you're at least getting a 27 silver, which is really powerful. Make that the last card you play. Because let's say you draw tw you pull 20 cards from your deck out of a 40 card deck. Herbert's going to be a huge swing anyways because you still have lots of boost. And let's say you had um, Blue Scout Commandos buffing a bunch of cards in your deck and you didn't get all of the ones that were buffed by Blue Scout's Commando. Then Herbert's going to be even bigger. There are a lot of ways to use Herbert instead of playing him immediately, in my opinion. Also, if you do do, if you do, do Blue Stripes Commandos and you buff, use Full Test and then Herbert... Then the blue stripe scouts, excuse me, in your hand will be four strength because he doesn't drain the units in your hand. He only drains the ones in your deck. He'll be four strength, and then all the other Tamarians in your deck will be reduced back down to three strength, like the infantrymen. And that'll mess up them um, blue stripe scouts from buffing them. That's that's anti synergy there. So again, I think of Herbert as a finisher rather than a starter unless you're really wanting to go for that um, easy win round one against people who don't have Scorches. <laughs> yeah, we talked about Vincent. Uh, here's Cayenne, Cursed Witcher. Um, I wish he, they had like a Viper school tag here as well. Spawn a bronze or silver alchemy card. So you get three choices of bronze or silver alchemy cards. So there's a potential that you get a bunch of uh, silver alchemy cards or a bunch of just bronze cards. It's a random, so there's some iffiness there. The other choice is uh, spawn a bronze or silver item. If you're building an item deck, I think Cayenne's really good. If you're building a, um, a alchemy deck, that's also possible, but I think uh, items will probably be better in Northern Realms at this moment, because I don't think they have many alchemy synergies. It's actually curious what um, the purpose of Cayenne is <laughs> for Northern Realms until they reveal more cards. Now, another correction I want to make is to Selkirk. Uh, dual means that you um, it doesn't resolve until one of the units dies. Now, there are a lot of ways to buff up Selkirk. You can uh, <laughs> you can use full test to bring him up to eight. You can use uh, uh, Royal Decree to pull him from your deck, giving him an extra two. Uh, because he has that armor, he can really remove a lot of things like Impera, Infor, uh, Brigades, and other cards that you want to just destroy but have a high strength on them. He can generate a lot of value. So he has, and I think he's going to appear in a lot of decks because of ways you can manipulate his um, ability. He's a lot like hand buff Skoytel with the Swordmasters, but even better because he can reach further with his um, his strength. Okay, going on, we're going to go to Skoytel. Skoytel got this new card called Panther, which is a beast. I wonder if there's going to be a beast synergy with um, Skoytel. Beasts are being added, to, more beasts are being added to the game, which is exciting. It says, deal seven damage to an enemy on a row with less than three units. So it's, um, chances are you're going to be able to get this effect. People like to scatter their cards onto multiple rows. Now, if they see the Panther, then they might try to avoid it. This card is a lot similar to uh, Damn Sorceress, and they both are four strength, deal seven damage. Uh, if you have Panthers in your hand, you just play them as soon as possible. Because your opponent's never going... Um, if you play one Panther, then your opponent's still, like... And you kill off one of their cards. They still 
don't have enough to fill a row with three units. And then you just play another panther and you keep them from getting three units on a row. Now, Northern Realms can counter this because they have lots of uh, poles. So if they play infantrymen, suddenly they have three units on a row. You, uh, but Panther is also good against the Blue Stripe Scouts and because you just remove them and they can't pull more of them from their deck with Reaver Scouts. Okay, Health of a Hunter just got buffed up to six. I love how uh, Health of a Hunter is like the uh, poor fucking infantry from the olden days. It's just when it was three, it was like obvious. Now it's six. So it comes onto the board as 12 points. Um, if you buff it up any, it gets two points for every time you for every point you buff it up. So if it's not, um, seven, it becomes 14. If it's eight, it becomes 16, nine, 18, so and so. So two point increments because it's doubling whatever you do. Um, the points are more guaranteed to be onto the board than Swordmaster. Since Swordmaster, if you hit something, the card you hit might have less strength or yeah, less strength than the <laughs> than the Swordmaster, meaning that all that excess is not hitting something else. Now the drawback for Health Elf Hunter is that if you boost it up a lot, then it's easy prey to um, Scorch and Igni effects. I still think that Health Elf Hunter is really healthy for the hand buff decks. I just wanted to come back to it because they changed it a bit. Uh, so here, uh, uh, Milan, um, the thing I misunderstood is I thought it was every row. It's end of a row, and it will do eight damage. Now, I don't actually like the effect for this card because it's only eight, it's maximum of eight additional damage. And the only time I ever see you wanting to do four damage to two units is if they play a Blue Stripe Scouts, if it's going to as their first card, it's going to be four strength for the Blue Stripe Scout and four strength for the Commando. You, suddenly they have two units on a row and then you do four damage to both of them they're they're both dead and <laughs> then they don't have a reaver scout target that's the only time i say think of this card as being better it, and that it would also be better than using the panther which would do seven damage uh and you would have three being wasted because one wouldn't waste any of its points on, in that scenario and that's that's only one faction that I can think of where you would ever want to do four damage to two cards. It's more important to remove something than uh, in the early game because decks accumulate power over time typically. So here's the Bourgeois card, or Gale. Uh, play a random bronze or silver item from your deck. Now if you put this card reveals that there will probably be a silver item for Skoidtel. And uh, this card will be really powerful. If you play two silvers simultaneously, that's a lot like a gold. Because there are a lot of gold cards that pull silver cards from your deck. <laughs> now, silver uh, items and spells tend to be weaker than silver units overall. But uh, at five strength, I... I highly, like the randomness isn't really all that important because you can affect randomness. I see Gale being in an item base special deck for Skoyatel. I, I love this card. It is probably the um, favorite, the crowd favorite for the whole set. <laughs> Nobody, Everybody was surprised when they made this card. Uh, next one is Xavier Moran. Uh, Moran. So I see this, uh, it says Dwarf. Boost a unit by the starting power of the last dwarf you played. So there are a lot of high base strength cards. When they say starting power, I think they mean initial power. And the, because these cards are still kind of in their development stage, uh, the language isn't consistent. So I'm reading starting power as initial power here. Good cards to play this into would be like Sheldon Skaggs. So use Azure's. Double cross to pull Sheldon's Gags to move your um, Blue Mountain Commandos and get a huge tempo swing. You play this on the, Sh um, the Sheldon's Gags, it gets an extra eight points. That puts it up to um, 17. So 
Uh, you get the nine points from the Blue Mountain Commandos. Then you play the Sheldon Skaggs, which gets three plus eight plus six. 17, 17 plus 17, 34 points in three cards with some de uh, with plenty of deck thinning. Oh, if you do the Azores double cross, it would be um, 36 points. I think this is a uh, great card. Now, if starting power means the amount of power it came onto the board as, as opposed to after it was boosted, that can that would mean something very different. <laughs> it would mean something, well, actually it means something slightly different. So if you use Azura's Double Cross, then Sheldon Skaggs is 10 strength, and then this would come out as 19. But I'm going to read starting power now as initial power of the card that you played. A little bit confusing. I always assume that if they change the language, it's because they're still not sure how they want to word it. Okay, the next card we have is Beastmaster. Now this card is not a beast, so you can't use uh, Bone Talisman on him. Soldier, Tursok, Spawn a Bear. So a bear is that 11 strength card that you can get with, um, I forget what it's called, <laughs> consume? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the spell that you destroy a card, then you play 11 strength bear. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, this card is great in a minis deck. And I mentioned the minis deck when I was talking about all the way up here, Stegabor. So if you have a bunch of one strength cards like Priestess of Freya and Beastmasters, Strigobor is great. Just play him, pull a Beastmaster, you lost nothing. Your opponent probably lost something. Most people are not going to be playing one strength cards unless you're playing a mirror match. Or if you get really unlucky and they draw like a Reaver Scout. Okay, so pretty basic card. It's going to be archetype, I think it's going to be archetype defining, really. It's 12 points, easy points, and you can combo it with other things. Ornamental Sword, this is the first silver spell being introduced to um, any faction, I think. Well, no, oh, no, no. Special item. Uh, actually, Nilfgaard got a special item. <laughs> it was the alchemy card. Spawn a Skellige Soldier and strengthen it by three. So spawn means it's not pulling it from your deck, it's giving you three random choices. Um, this also works in mini um, Skellige because this doesn't count as a unit, so it can't be pulled by Stregobor. It could also theoretically pull a silver Skellige card, I think. Some of them are soldiers, I think. I'm pretty sure. I have to look into it. Ornamental short Sword. I have to see the full set to decide whether or not I think this card's good enough to include into a deck. But it is a special item, so if you build an item deck for Skellige, you would definitely include it. Uh, the last one is Uftahin. I, didn't, I can't say this. <laughs> uh, Beast Curse, deal two damage to uh, each damage enemy on the board. So uh, this is really bad against um, Northern Realms that's running Blue Stripe Scouts because they're going to be boosted way above their uh, base strength and so you will never get them damaged or wounded. Against other Skellige decks, this will be great. It's a good um, swing card. You would play this with Overdose. You get a huge um, board swing. <laughs> and that's all, folks. Tell me what you guys think.